else on one, why Hashem allowed Hitler to kill so many Gedoyle. What should you tell yourself, you mean? And the answer is, why did Hashem allow Hitler to kill not Gedoyle? Why did he allow that he killed Gitani? Let's understand that. And the answer is, because even though I'm not capable, I'm not worthy of telling why Hashem did things, but following certain rules that our sages told us, there's a rule that there were once two tzaddikim, and they died both young. And the Gemara said, why did they die young? It was like two ripe figs that had to be taken off the tree when they were ripe. Because if you wouldn't take them off, they would rot on the tree. And these sadikim were taken out of the world before they spoiled. Yomu Zakai, well, Yomu Zakai, better to die innocent than to die guilty. We have to know the generation in Europe was rolling downhill. I was there. I left in 1938. That's the year Hitler marched into Sudetenland. And it was rolling downhill all over Europe. And nobody should tell you any differently. They were deteriorating rapidly. In the small towns, there were movies already. There were dance. I myself saw men and women dancing together in a little town that if you didn't watch while you're walking on the road, you pass through without knowing you pass through the town. That's how small the town was. There were men and women dancing with the music already. All the wicked ways of the outside world had come in already. And there were atheists everywhere. You have to know, in the small towns, all the stores were closed on Shabbos. But that was an old custom. They couldn't break easily. But already, after World War I, there already was one store, at least the barber shop was open on Shabbos. You know what that means in the small towns? It was unthinkable once. And everybody was going out to the barber shop. The youth gathered in the barber shop. And outside the city, there was a hafshara. And later in the night, Friday night, the whole youth was there. In the hafshara. And they were singing, we're going to a new land, and we're having new ways, a different culture, we're going to build a socialistic government, a commune, and everything now was changing. Now suppose they had been allowed to exist. You know what would have happened? You wouldn't have any Judaism left in Europe. So I called the Shibara who rescued them. He took them out of the world before they had an opportunity to deteriorate entirely. And he got made they went to Gandhi after being in Hitler's Gehenna. They were successful because we don't live in this world alone. The greatest misfortune is to live in a world even happily, but to deteriorate and become a pig oil and to forget Yiddishkeit and to mingle among the Goyim. That's the greatest disaster that could be. And I call the Jibor who rescued them. But you have to know that you have a lot of propaganda to the opposite of what I'm telling you. And I'm able to defend this and to explain it with statistics. Somebody I'll write a book about, a book is already written. I'll publish it someday to and it and it explain many facts that were known to people who were there. It's open knowledge that the generation was being ruined and they were falling down every day to a lower and lower Madrigan. Now, you do it, you must know, are to blame for the condition of the generation. If the Gdailim had come out in a war, in a great attempt to bring the people back, I cannot tell you what would have happened. But there was no movement. There was no movement. Of course, the Gdailim cannot be blamed much, because nobody listened to them in Europe. All the newspapers were in the control of the religious. And the religious wouldn't print any opinions of Rabboni. Rabboni didn't have any paper. They had a paper came out once a month, let's say, of the Tia Agudis Israel. Nobody read it. And a very small organization in Europe. There was a Rabboni talk about one daily newspaper.
even orthodox. But there were thousands of irreligious daily newspapers. I have no idea how much they read papers in those days. And all were anti-religious, virulent, fiery anti-religious. And the people were reading them and getting worse and worse. And therefore, the daily, when the time came, even Shanit and Rishus Lamashis, Shubay Namav Hemen Sadiq Lavash. Now this was spoken about a number of times here, and if you want more information, read Parts of Rejoice Our Youth and Awake My Glory, and you will get certain insights that the general public doesn't know. Enter the number of the purpose. Why lately there's been a revulsion against the Holocaust, and there are plenty of Rishoyim today who deny it. We have to know that a great error has been committed all the time by the Holocaust people. They leave out one element that's the most important of everything, that is Hashem. Hashem made the Holocaust, not the Germans. Don't deceive yourself. Of course, the Germans are assuring the belief, and they deserve to be destroyed in the many millions, and it should be last the Kama Bagoyim to Hechaz Malumim. They should be in the Kama of them, and yet. The emphasis should be on the Lishbola who did that to us. Now by constantly talking about what the Goyim did and never once mentioning that I shouldn't have anything to do with it, a fundamental error is being committed. And now I shall be going to show you, you think that you're going to arouse the Rachmim of the Goyim to have more pity. I'm going to show you it will have the opposite effect. What am I going to learn from this? Ways and means what they would like to do to the Jews themselves. Yes. They look at all these things and all that they might say, I some form of sympathy, but in their minds are thinking, I'd like to do that ourselves someday. But they left out the teacher. Most important part of the whole Holocaust business was only made for the purpose that we should cry out to Hashem. That's all it's made for. If that's omitted, then the whole thing will backfire. Enter the number of the question you would like to listen to.